Good morning all and welcome to our morning prayer. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His Holy Word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask for His to ask His forgiveness of our sins and to seek His grace that through His Son Jesus Christ we may offer ourselves in service. Let us worship and praise Him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise Your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before His face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Come into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and bless His holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. We pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We listen to the word of God and we have a psalm, our psalm of the day. Psalm 1, 2 and 3 can be found on page 607 of the Anglican Prayer Book. Blessed is the man who has not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor followed the way of sinners, nor taken his seat amongst the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law will he ponder day and night. He is like a tree planted beside streams of water that yields its fruit in due season. Its leaves also shall not wither, and look, whatever he does, it shall prosper. As for the ungodly, it is not with, not so with them. They are like the chaff which the wind scatters. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand up at the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord cares for the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Why are the nations in tumult? And why do the people cherish a vain dream? The kings of the earth rise up, and the rulers conspire together against the Lord, and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds asunder. Let us throw off their chains from us. He that dwells in heaven shall laugh them to scorn. The Lord will hold them in derision. Then will he speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury. I, the Lord, have set up my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will announce the Lord's decree, that which he has spoken. You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and shatter them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings, be advised that you are judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with awe, and govern yourselves in fear and trembling, lest he be angry and you perish in your cause. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Bless, blessed are those that turn to him for refuge. Lord, how numerous are my enemies! Many they are that rise against me. Many? There are that talk of me and say, There is no help for him in his, in his God. But, <clears throat> but you, Lord, are about me as a shield. You are my glory and the lifter up of my head. I cry to the Lord with a loud voice, and he answers me from his holy hill. 
I lay myself down asleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. Therefore I will not be afraid of the multitudes of the nations who have set themselves against me on every side. Arise, Lord, and deliver me, O my God, for you will strike all my enemies upon the cheek. You will break the teeth of the ungodly. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. O let your blessing be upon your people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We have our first reading of the day. The first reading is taken from the book of Amos, chapter 2, reading from verse 6 to 16, taken from the New Revised Standard Version, Anglicized. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. <clears throat> they will trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and push the afflicted out of the way. <clears throat> Father and son, go in to the same girl, so that my holy name is profaned. They lay themselves down beside every altar on garments taken in the pledge. And in the house of their God they drink wine, bought with fines they impose. Yet I destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of cedars, and who was as, a st as strong as oaks. I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. Also I brought you up out of the land of Egypt, and led you forty years in the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. And I raised up some of your children to be prophets, and some of your youths to be Nazarites. Is it not indeed so, O people of Israel, says the Lord? But you made the Nazarites drink wine, and commanded the prophet, saying, You shall not prophesy. So I will press you down in your place, just as a cart presses down when it is full of sheaves. Flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not retain their strength, nor shall the mighty save their lives. Those who handle the bow shall not stand, and those who are swift at or foot shall not save themselves, nor shall those who ride horses save their lives, and those who are stout of heart among the mighty shall flee away naked on that day, says the Lord. Here ends the first lesson. Canticle number 13 can be found on page 352 of the Anglican Prayer Book. Jesus Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but trusted in him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that he might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep. But now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We now have our second reading of the day. The second reading is taken from Second Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to 11, taken from the New Revised Standard Version, Anglicized. Simeon, Peter, a servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith as precious as ours through the righteousness of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, May grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Thus he has given us, through these things, his precious and very great promises, so that through him you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust, and may become participants in the divine nature. For this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness and goodness with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with endurance and endurance with godliness and godliness with mutual affection and mutual affection with love. For if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For anyone who lacks these things is short-sighted and blind and is forgetful of the cleansing of past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to confirm your call and election, for if you do this, you will never stumble, for in this way, entry into the internal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ will be richly provided for you. 
here ends the second lesson. The Song of the Church We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. Your true and only Son, worthy of worship, the Holy Spirit, Advocate and Guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood. And bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. We say the Apostles' Creed together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing. To your church, holiness. To the world, peace. To this nation, justice and to all people knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families, protect the weak, heal the sick, comfort the dying, and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect of Today Almighty Father, your Son came to us in humility as our Saviour, and at the last day he will come again in glory as our Judge. Give us grace to turn away from darkness to the light of Christ, that we will be ready to welcome Him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for Peace O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting Father, you have safely brought us to the beginning of another day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin, and safe from every danger, and enable us this day to do only what is right in your eyes, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here there is a sermon again, and if it is a Friday we will have a short homily or we listen to Sunday's sermon or otherwise as per normal you can just pause the video and reflect on people who are sick that you want to pray for 
just pause the video and take some time to mention names and to pray for these people and then we can continue the service with the prayers after that our upper reading is taken from monday the december the 4th 2023 <coughs> making time for god a reading from luke chapter 10 reading from verse 38 to 42 taken from the king james version now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him, and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she may help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. I have been doing early morning devotions upon the upper room for over 35 years. I am now retired, but I, remembered, but I remember when I was working that there were mornings when my mind was preoccupied with work and family responsibilities. Sometimes I felt I had so much to do that I shortened my devotion time so I could move on to that day's activities. In hindsight, I can see that I was putting other priorities ahead of spending time with the Lord. We see several examples of this in the Bible. One story is in Luke 9, chapter 57 to 62, where two men said they would follow Jesus, but only after they had attended to their other tasks. Another example is from today's Bible reading. When Jesus arrived to visit Martha and Mary, Martha was too distracted and busy to spend time with the Lord. When she complained about Mary sitting and listening to Jesus, he gently rebuked her. Martha, let little, Martha, let little things get in the way of big things. I can relate because I have done the same. As I now reflect back, I can see that the days when I was too busy were exactly the days I should have been spending more time in prayer, not less. Our goal is not to fit Jesus into a busy schedule, it is to make him the focus of our life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that sometimes we get too caught up in the daily activities of life. Help us always to focus on you. Amen. The thought for the day is, today I will make time for God, who always makes time for me. This was written by Mr. John D. Brown of Minnesota in the USA. Pray focus people who feel overwhelmed. Blessing and honor and thanksgiving and praise, more than we can utter, more than we can understand, be to you, O holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. From all angels, all people, all creatures, forever and ever. God of all power, we acclaim you. Lord of all grace, we worship you. We are not worthy of you, yet your goodness makes us praise you and give you thanks. We praise you for the life you have given us, and for all the blessings we have received at your hand. Above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the grace and hope which his death and resurrection have brought to us. We ask this of you, our Father, that we may never forget your goodness to us, and that we may show our thankfulness not only in words, but by the service of our lives, both now and in all eternity. Heavenly Father, your Son promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will hear us, answer our prayers as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, the fullness of eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed day and thank you.